Welcome to the Music Ed Matters podcast. I'm your host, Dr. Emily Williams Birch, and this podcast, it exists for you. Whether you're a music lover, an educator, a choir member, each week we bring guests to the show to help explore what matters in music. I'm so glad that you're here. Welcome to the show. Hello, welcome to the Music Ed Matters podcast. I'm your host, Dr. Emily Williams Birch, and this episode is a little different and a whole lot of fun. We're going to hang out with Christina Vihar. She is one of the coolest teachers, and she is an elementary music specialist pursuing her master's at Florida State. Christina came in and taught some of my students at the university level in our methods classes last fall, and the energy changed the students' perspective on the love and passion for elementary music. But that's not the only thing you're going to learn in this episode. What Christina and I do is kind of exchange our favorite things, our favorite songs, our favorite activities. And I want you to approach this episode with a couple things in mind. One, if you're just looking for something to do, something creative, something fun to spice up your classroom, listen, you might hear something that can work in your space no matter what your age group. Two, if you are looking for ways to really engage or connect with your students, we talk about that a lot. And three, just listen because it's fun. We have an absolute blast and you can feel the energy as you're listening. And sometimes that's what we need in January when we're coming back to the semester and getting started. It's sometimes a little daunting to look ahead, when, especially if you don't know exactly what's going to be coming. And I hope that this gives you a little shot of energy, a little shot of adrenaline, maybe some ideas and definitely a big smile. This episode is brought to you by the Kennison Coral Company. We are so thankful for all that they do to make this show possible. We are thoroughly enjoying a lot of their rehearsal tracks with my choirs, all four of them. So do check out the code and all of the fabulous things they have going on on their website. One more little announcement. There is a bonus episode coming this week announcing something huge that we're doing on the podcast this year. I hope that you will tune in and enjoy the bonus episode coming later this week, and I can't wait to hear what you think. If you want to join the conversation, jump over to patreon.com slash musicedmatters, and we have conversations and monthly meetups and so much more. And last but not least, I've been doing some research on podcasting, and I hear I'm supposed to say rate and review us, and that helps more people find the show. So if you have a second, rate and review us. I don't know what that means, but hopefully it's a good thing. All right, I am done talking. I present to you now all the fun things, singing and more, with Miss Christina Vihar. Today on the Music Ed Matters podcast, we are talking to Miss Christina Vihar. Hello, Christina. Hi, Emmy. I'm so glad that you're here. I have been looking forward to this for a very long time. Same. You are amazing, and I always have so much fun with you. Girl, you're a blast, but because this is a special episode where we're going to be sharing all of our favorites, and we'll talk about that in a minute, can we start with the hello song? Um, always. Yes. Let's do it. Okay, so I have a favorite hello song. You have to be able to clap twice, which is great for following directions. If you can watch or if you're watching the YouTube, you'll notice that there's lots of nonverbal cues with my eyes and breathing, but all you do is clap twice. I'll sing it first and you just clap twice, but you're kind of muted. It goes like this. Sing hello and how are you? Sing hello and how are you? Sing hello and get down and get down and get down. Sing hello and how are you and you can do lots of stuff with the last get down and get down and get down and get down and they can freeze and have to watch you it's so much fun do you want to do it again or do you think that's enough um totally want to do it again let's do it that's not my okay. clap see it's gonna be great because we're gonna have zoom delay it'll be perfect this is this is real virtual singing sing hello and how are you <laughs> sing hello and how are you Sing hello and get down and get down and get down. Sing hello <laughs> and how are you? <laughs> I love it. <laughs> Yay! It's also really fun once you get it to have the students come up and lead it. A lot of times I'd have the older students go do this song with the little students at, at like little rallies or things like that when the whole school came together. Because it's such a great opportunity to lead and to follow directions and to get moving and what are we doing today, Christina? Tell the world, what are we doing? We're gonna have so much fun. We're just gonna do all our favorite things, favorite songs, movement, and just have a blast. And 
for people who don't know who you are, who is Christina Vihar? I, so I am a music educator. I spent three and a half years in the classroom doing elementary music, which I adored. Um, I was a director for a training choir for a little bit with the Greater Atlanta Girls Choir. And I just like love meeting new people and doing all the music things and having all the fun. So that's what I'm doing. And I'm also a graduate student at Florida State, which is the best thing ever. It's fun to watch all of it on your social media. I had Christina come and teach my elementary methods class for a day as a guest lecture. And it was right at that point in the semester where we had just finished our first unit and they were starting to put the pieces of what we're doing with our lives as elementary music teachers. And Christina came in full of energy and just dove right in as if my students were first or second graders. And their eyeballs were big like silver dollars and it changed their life. They all wrote about it in their final um, test for class about what was the most memorable thing from class was having Christina in class and seeing what it was like to really have the energy to teach a huge group of little people. And so I'm excited to bring that energy to our listeners. I'm so excited. Like we're going to go through today and uh, do all of our favorite songs. You can listen, hopefully get some ideas, some things you might want to use as you jump into the semester. What, what grade level, what type of activity do you want to start with? Do we want to start like right at the beginning? Do some like kindergarten, first grade? Yes. Um, How do you normally start your K-1ers? So I usually do something that I call four rounds of focus. And it's a bunch of ideas that I've gathered from other educators, different like music philosophies, things like that. And we do things that are going to relate to the lesson that day. And sometimes too, we just do things for fun because music is fun and we should incorporate that as well because that's just as valuable. So it'll be stuff with like rhythm or melody or whatever, movement, um, listening, all kinds of things, evaluating. Let's appreciate a piece of art from another pe uh, place in the world. And we do four different rounds of something that's gonna relate to the day or for fun. Um, and that takes like the first, you know, five, seven minutes. And then we just have a blast doing those things. And they're all on grade level, you know, so we're gonna, first graders and kindergartners can do melody. They can do rhythm. You just have to, are we going to do, do your four rounds right now? I mean, we could totally do it. Yes, let's do it. Okay, look, I'm a first grader. I'm ready. So you might walk in and we'd be like, okay, it's time for four rounds of focus. Are you Woo! ready? I need your watching eyes and your listening ears and your listening heart and your good zip lips. And they show me all of them and it's precious and I love it. And we might do something like, okay, we are going to need those really good watching eyes and you're going to watch Miss Vihar and you're gonna copy exactly what she does. So I'm gonna go first. And when it's my turn, only I can go. But then when I point to you, it's your turn and you can go and you wanna do the exact same thing as Miss Vihar and you're gonna copy my hands. So I might do on level rhythm, something like. Exactly, awesome, you're doing great. And then I would keep doing more. So we would keep going and do like. And we would just keep doing more, do maybe five or six to kind of keep them engaged. And then we would move on to round two and be like, are you ready for round two? If you're ready, show me two fingers. That was Love four it. fingers. I got excited. You're fine. You're like, you're, you're ready for round four already. I love it. I love the two. Energy. I'm ready for two. <laughs> and so then I would do something like, can you echo exactly what I say? It's kind of like the clapping game, but this time you're going to use your words. And I would say something like, ti ti ta 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 ti ti ta 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 Ti-ti-ta, ti-ti-ta. Ti-ti-ta, ti-ti-ta. And we would keep doing some more. And then we would go to round three. And I would say, you're going to copy me again. And you're going to need your head. And you're going to need your shoulders. And I want you to copy exactly what I do. And you're going to sing exactly what I sing. And I might sing something like, hi, hi, low. Hi, hi, low. Low, hi, low. Low, hi, low. Low, low, low. La, la, la. And we would keep doing and then I would do like a round four and we might do some sort of movement activity like keeping a steady beat on different places of our body. So I would play some music or something like that. Um, something to listen to on the radio, a classical piece, a piece from somewhere else in the world, a piece that they suggest. And we would keep mm -hmm. the steady beat on different places of our body like on our nose or on our head 
or on our shoulders or our knees. And when we get really fancy, I let a student come up and they get to decide where we do it. And that is so fun. And they love doing that. So that's an example of only four different things, but I have like a list of things and I just pull like, okay, do I want to do rhythm today? Do I want to do melody today? Do I want to do listening movement? And then I just pull four different things um, and we put them together. You make it your four rounds. And it's kind of like in choir world, you have your body warm up, your breath warm up, your vocal ease, your range extension or harmonization or whatever. Same concept, only four rounds makes it a game for the little people. Exactly. And elementary kids love a game. If they can compete with you or beat you at something, like anything you can turn into a game, they're all about it. Because yes. It but I think that makes it fun too. And I love how your four rounds give so many opportunities for student leadership. I did have a great listener question pop up in my slide into my DMs. Look at me being all smooth with my words here. I had yeah. something slide into my DM asking, how do you choose popular songs from the radio to use in class as for you like a beat activity or I use a lot of popular music as a warm-up um, my adult choir warmed up to the Bee Gees on Monday because Stayin' Alive is the perfect vocal exploration dance song for a group of 50 67 year olds they had a great time how do you pick popular music and then I'll I'll tell you mine so honestly, I will like if I'm driving to pick up my groceries or driving to go do an errand or something, I will turn on the radio station that my kids listen to. And I'm like, OK, what is awesome? What do they love? And I just really try to listen to what is going on on the radio right now. But then I'll also take student suggestions. So if they're like, Missy, I really love this song. I'll be like, OK, well, let, like, let's just do that in class then. Um, obviously, with elementary, you have to be mindful of finding clean versions of things sometimes and stuff like that kids mm -hmm. bop is amazing um there's always a version of kids bop anything so we do that a lot but um yeah it's it's a further way to give students ownership by just asking them so most of the times my suggestions come from my kids a lot of mine do too you also played a great example for my choir when you worked with my choir where it was a popular song that had been done acapella with a a choir and that was a really cool segue into how popular music and choir intersects I just like you I do a lot of listening and I always know like when you pick your four rounds you know what you're working on for that day just like when you pick your warm-ups you know what rep you're working on so when I'm listening to a piece of music or if a singer says hey I'm really into this artist or this particular song I listen to it for things that we need in our quote-unquote four rounds where can we do breathing activities like sh or tia th or ts or short sounds or long sounds like within the song to match the beat and where can we sing along like with the bg song where can we harmonize where can we have a break dance session so i'm listening and almost warm up choreographing the popular music just like you know where they're going to be beating to different parts to align with the form. So it becomes kind of intentional listening. Absolutely. And then something else too that kind of connects is one time in my four rounds of focus, I took a song that they know like from the radio or one that they're really into and we'll turn it into, and I know you've done this too. You turn it into Solfege and you have them guess the song or something like that. So that makes it fun for them too. One of my first ever choir warm-ups I ever designed was, I'm going to set, you'll know my age when I tell you what song it was, but it was like, da 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 And so we started the the soulfish so slow into it, and I started Shella Rondoing until they got it, and I just remember vividly the image of all those little choir kids, they're all like graduated from college now, all those little choir kids, and they're like, this is a song on the radio and soulfish is now cool because it goes with this song right i know get them a buy, like let them buy into their what they're learning it's so fun it also when i'm thinking about this from a supervising perspective i just had to finish my certification or recertification yesterday to do student teachers and i remember one of the things i love about the little 4.0 rubric we have to do in south carolina is not only are you teaching the material, are you making the transfer? Are you teaching to where the students are and making it relatable to the students' lives, the students' like situations, and the other classes? So it's more than just cross-curricular, but making it relatable. And I think using music that we might not typically think as good for music classrooms, 
you can find meaning if you are intentional with your listening and your programming and your planning. Absolutely. All music has a purpose. And I feel like if someone has put their heart and their energy into a piece of music, then why does it have value? Or who, who are we to say that this piece of music is more valuable than this piece of music? Mm-hmm. As everybody puts their, their heart and their energy into their music. So I totally agree. Mm-hmm. All right. So we've done your kind of get kicked off started four rounds. We've talked about picking non-classical music. Let's do another activity. What grade do you want to go to now? Or do you have another song picked out? So I have some kindergarten and first grade songs that I love if we can stay with the babies. For a yes, minute. let's stay with the babies also, for a minute. Also can go into second and third graders because my babies, even though they don't like to act like babies sometimes, I'm like, you love it. And they know it. They'll never admit it, but they they love it. Mm-hmm. Love story time. And anytime I turn a story into a song or there is song tales that exist, obviously songs that tell stories. Um they just love it. So mm-hmm. this can go into second and third grade too. Even the fourth and fifth graders, they love it too, even though they don't like to admit it. I think so that a lot of times you can use the younger stuff as like a brain break almost. Even sixth grade choir, we'd sometimes do like the little hand jive songs that I had taught to second grade earlier yeah. that day because I taught K-8. Sometimes we just, oh, let's take a mental break and we do some type of crazy hand jive and then what musical terms can we apply to it? Like anyway, we could go I- on for days about pedagogy. You are so right. And you can always apply those musical elements that they're learning as they progress um, to old concepts, which is cool. And they can mm-hmm. grow with the songs that they learned when they were. Yes. Little yeah. babies. Okay. What song are we doing now? Okay. So this is one that I did back when we were fully virtual teaching back when I was in the classroom and it's called No Bears. And it's so fun because it really engaged my students totally on the screen which I loved, everyone could participate, everyone could have a blast. And this is something too that people can do in a hybrid setting or in a fully face-to-face setting too. So I love it because it's uh, transferable to every type of teaching, style of teaching. So the song goes, no bears out tonight, no bears out tonight, no bears out tonight, they've all gone away. And my students could either turn their video off or they could hide from the screen or they could go get a blanket or a pillow or something and like hide in their bear cave. Oh, it's so fun. Yes, go get your cave, girl. I got my cave. I love it. Just gonna move my dog off the cave. Sorry, dog. Okay. <laughs> I'm ready. <laughs> I have your cave. It's so fun. And then it's the best because then you have your like pillow or your blanket for story time later that you can cuddle with. So yes. Two for one. So we we practice we do a few practice rounds first, like making sure we know how to hide in our cave whenever the song is over. And then whenever I say come back, bears, you gotta make your best bear face. So it's so fun. So it goes. We better practice. I'm ready. Yeah, practice. We got this. Practice rounds. No bears out tonight. No bears out tonight. No bears out tonight. They've all gone away. Come back, bears. Oh, yes. (laughs) All right, this time you have to do without my help is what I would tell them. So then I would sing it again, and then they would have to hide at the end of the song. And then when they got really good at it, a student would sing, they've all gone away and do that part as a solo. So we would have to listen for them. So I would, I would lead it in and then the student would sing the solo and then we would all respond to them. So that's oh, such a blast. So oh, lots of different yeah. tempos and a listening game mm-hmm. and an engaging game. Oh, that is so much fun. Yeah. Awesome. And a great thing that you can do for assessment too. Like yes. if every student have a chance to, to sing the solo, then you've just assessed all of your students. Mm-hmm. It would also pair really well with Teddy Bear, Teddy Bear. Did you ever do Teddy Bear, Teddy Bear? Teddy Bear, Teddy Bear, turn around, touch the ground, all of that. Yeah, but I kind of changed the ending because I'm not so good at following directions all the time. Neither am I. So let's do your way because it's 100% better. Well, you have to kind of get your jazz out and it's like, you know, Teddy Bear, Teddy Bear, turn around. Teddy bear, teddy bear, touch the ground. Teddy bear, teddy bear, shine your shoes. Teddy bear, teddy bear, sing the blues. Banana, nana, banana, nana, That's how I played with it. That is so much better. I love it so much. I yes, kind of get bored of so me songs, so I have to change the endings because that's not real life. Exactly. 
there's more intervals than so me and I do love yeah. them I do do yeah. love them yes but every once in a while I need a little I need to change the ending choose a different direction absolutely what's your next song so and I want to do some of yours too because I know you have lots of good ones I just have I, little ones to sprinkle in I didn't have teddy bear on the list but I couldn't help it after you sang a song about teddy bears I love it so much. So I, for like my second and third graders, they really adore song tales, especially ones that I can let them come up with their own answers or add on to or things like that. So a few of my favorites, I don't know if you've ever heard of them, are Over in the Meadow and Had a Little Rooster. Had a Little Rooster, I do more with my little babies, but Over in the Meadow is super fun for all ages. And it talks about um, animal moms and it starts with like a turtle and her little turtle one, and then it moves to I think foxes and birds and all sorts of animals and it's super cute and that's just one that I sing to them. Can you but sing like the beginning of it to us? Sure yeah so it starts with the turtle and it goes over in the meadow in the sand in the sun lives an old mother turtle and her little turtle one dig said the mother I dig said the one so they dug and were clad in the sand in the sun and usually once they know the story I have them do the action word and we mm -hmm. tie that into um, like English language arts right as literacy and such they, they start doing all of the all of the verbs for me and singing them which is cute and another one they love is called Jenny Jenkins and it's about um, someone that is like trying to figure out what to wear and so she's like I won't wear white because it's too bright or I won't wear pink because it's the color of whatever like she comes up with all these reasons of why she won't wear something but she will wear blue if your love is true so that's the only color that she'll wear so then I have them do different colors that they come up with that are not in the story and they have to come up with their rhyming words so it's uh oh, I go God. what will you wear oh my dear oh my dear oh what will you wear Jenny Jenkins I won't wear white it's much too bright buy me a 40 rolly tilly tolly seek a double roll Jenny Jenkins roll and so my favorite one that I always do like to give them an example of one that I've created is I will wear gold because it's the color of the nose. Buy me a 40 rolly silly jolly silly <laughs> Jenny Jenkins roll because they know I'm obsessed with FSU and garnet and gold. So That's they come up so with it. It's so fun. If you're listening and you've never done a song story, I first learned about song tales and song stories from John Fire Robin, and he has a collection of books with a ton of them. And the whole idea that he presents, which is really fascinating, is that these song tales teach the younger singers especially how to focus, how they get to hear a great vocal model, they get to hear how to follow through an entire piece. It's a really cool activity to do, especially at the end when you're coming down at the end of a lesson and get them ready to go back into their classroom. I love song tales, but I didn't know either of those two. Those are great. They're so fun. And it's just a really cool way to tie into literacy too and make those cross -connect curricular connections. Um, I've done it where they create like a storybook that they can keep in their classroom. So they'll come up with their ideas and they'll illustrate it and then we'll bind it and give it as a gift to their homeroom teacher. Oh, that's so sweet. It it, like meaningful for them and, and really special. And any kid loves to have their idea part of the classroom. We would do, we'd bring in the books from their classroom. I'd go to their classroom teacher and say, hey, what books are you trying to get them interested in right now? And I'd borrow two or three books and we would do small group activity where they'd have to find something in the book that we could sing or write a song about. But this would be, of course, like third grade or fourth grade because mm -hmm. we'd sung so many storybooks all the way through. So they kind of got it, the jive of how we sing a storybook. Like when you yeah. have like, I'm thinking like the Hungry Caterpillar and uh, Capiti Plain and mm -hmm. those type, there wasn't a woman who swallowed a fly and those type of books. Yes. That's such a brilliant idea. I love it's, that. It's easy to connect those pieces, but mm -hmm. still you're learning so many musical concepts as long as you're intentional about what musical concepts you're putting into it. Exactly. Exactly. Okay. What are we playing next? All right. So for my fourth and fifth graders, one of my favorite, favorite things that I've ever done with fourth and fifth grade is called a storybook rap showcase. And we took like books that have a heavy rhyme sequence like scheme and that are in a like a two, four or a four, four, just because it's a little bit easier to latch on to meter like llama, llama, red pajama, or um, what is another one? A oh, chicka, chicka, boom, boom. They love, mm -hmm. and they have to figure out how to turn that into a rap. And then we accompany it with 
garage band that like a backing track that they have created so they love that because it lets them create their song tail and they're wrapping it and then they present it for the little biddies which is super fun for them so they love that they love that and the kindergartners and the first graders their eyes just light up with that because like first of all this is really cool secondly I get to do that one day so it kind of creates that that bridge Mm -hmm. of what they can look forward to Um, and it makes it relevant for my students because this is what they love right now. They love Mm -hmm. doing things that they hear on the radio or things that are similar to that. And that's important. So I was like, you know what, I'm going to let them create their own thing because that's what fourth and fifth graders love to do. And who like everyone really loves to do that. Everyone Mm -hmm. loves it. And they should have opportunities to do their own things and they create their own wraps and stuff like that. So I had a student group that they did Llama Llama Red Pajama and they created their backing track on GarageBand. And I'm kind of stealing their idea right now because I obviously haven't really created one of my own. Those are all for all of my students, but they would wrap it to their backing track and they'd be like, Llama Llama Red Pajama reads a story to his mama and and do that and they will present it. And I've even done it where it's been a performance. So I take something that we do in the classroom and then we put it on as a performance for the families because I'm all about taking things you do in the classroom and using that for your performances because it just makes sense. Why do extra things when you can take stuff that they already do every and they're day? They're proud that they've done it. Exactly, exactly. And then you I have think a. That's thing true that- for choir too, though. Sorry to interrupt you, but it's so no, true for no. choir too. It's so simple to have like once a month invite the parents into rehearsal or invite your admins into rehearsal, invite your board into rehearsal and just show them what it looks like. Cause they honestly have no clue. I was talking to Mary Biddlecomb this morning and she said, you know, I remember at Christmas being so overwhelmed cause I just couldn't watch every virtual concert that was out there. Mm-hmm. And then I realized that they weren't for me to watch. They were for all these parents and every parent and every family, they're not inundated with virtual choirs on their social media. They just get that one. And to them, it is novel and new and cool. So crazy thought to us, these parents and these admins and these board members, they haven't been in music class all year. They haven't been in rehearsal. This is going to be cool and new and innovative to them. And just invite them. Exactly. And it makes it so memorable for everybody. Every Mm -hmm. family loves to see their student love what they do. And every student is always so proud to share something that they have created themselves especially if it's something too that you've done enough in class where they're comfortable and confident in it. So yeah. often you've seen like preparing the song for the PTA or whatever, but they just threw it together and it's not something they're confident with. And you can see that in their little faces. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. And if it comes from a genuine place and you've taken the time to do it, it just, it creates so much more of a memorable experience. It's like, why do things just to do things? We should be doing things because they bring us joy and because they bring us light and they bring us opportunities and if I can create a space to do that then like me as the teacher it's like my job is to hand this off to you like Mm -hmm. I'm supposed to let you as the student shine so Mm -hmm. any opportunity I have to do that why wouldn't I do that so I have to talk about backing tracks for another second yes you taught us this song that to this day is my kids choir's favorite song to sing dough I make my cookies out of dough ray like on a sunny, sunny day, me, there's nowhere else I'd rather be, fall, sing out your fa la la, so like a solo, whoa, la like your lava, make your lava lamp glow, tea, have a cup of tea with me, and I'll drink it with my cookies made of dough. Yeah, yeah so I know this because we probably sang it, oh, about 600 times, but I let them make their own backing tracks and then they get to be the person that's audioed on Zoom and they share their backing track and we all mute and do the song to their backing track. Holy smokes, have we had fun. We've gone into reggae backing tracks, hip hop backing tracks, country backing tracks. We have been having so much fun. But now my guys choir uses backing tracks for all of their solfege and sight singing. They said it keeps them together better. So when we're doing our major, minor, and chromatic scales, and then we do our sight reading, they're like, where's our backing track? Who's making it today? Yes. Walk out to that backing track and right. own that sight reading. That Such is- a simple thing to add. And they are obsessed and they're creating it. And they're like, oh, we, we need to go faster. Their little uh, do, do, re, do, do, re, mi, re, do is so fast now. I can't even. 
That is so great. But that was one of your ideas that I love too. Thank you. I stole that song from Music K8 and it's, it's just such a blast. It's oh, so it's fun. a great, the hand motions to it and the making your own beat that I'm telling you, my kids group asked to sing the dough song all the time. They call it the dough song. Mm-hmm. I love it. it makes me really happy. All right. Do you have any other songs you want to sing? So, I mean, I, I can go with more, but I want to do some of yours too. Okay. I have like a massive list. Yes. So, I have a favorite song from Quaverland, but I kind of adapted it because I really love that the solfege goes, so me, la, so me, so, so me, so, so me, so me, la, so me, la, so me, re, do. And the words are, hey, Mr. B-Boy, play that beat, sing that beat. Hey, Mr. B-Boy, play that beat for me. Well, I have them write their own words to it. And it's amazing every time because they now know the melody and there's a little rap section in the middle and we usually have them. They don't, the rap in there doesn't work, but the backing track and everything to that, they get so excited about me right now. And then we go find it in whatever other music we're singing that be- it's just such a perfect focus on la so mi re do, which is a blast. That's the what B-boy song. Idea that you can just bring in anytime take a song and then okay where can you find this in a new song Mm, I think that's so because what's the point of doing this all right right. so I got my doctorate in South Carolina and there's a huge posse of um, music learning theory people and Mm -hmm. I started digging into what it means it is absolutely fascinating I hadn't done a lot of research into it in my undergrad or master's but the idea is that you can prepare the students minds for all different types of sounds kind of either or situation this is a very dumbed down version of mlt if you are an mlt expert feel free to call me i'd love to have you on the show i know quite a few of y'all that are on my list but what i love is how they introduce modes and so there's this one song that i usually do with my beginning like fourth fifth sixth group and it's it's a wonderful day to go sailing on the lake with the wind in my hair. It's like a holiday. Life is free and easy and my dreams will lead me there. That little ending. Do, 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 do. And we use that phrase as the warm up for the song. And then we sing it on do in a round we sing it on words in a round we make up our own motions and then do soundless round love and it's so much fun because a little do 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 i believe it's mixolydian don't quote me i trust you yeah that could be close i'll I'll, 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 well maybe that's also one of my favorites from the quaver land um there are four more i'm looking I wrote on pencil and then I spilt my water. <laughs> oh no! So, oh, I'm not curious about it. Did you ever do um, the uh, so yonder come day? Right, very familiar tune. It's a Gullah piece. We live near where the Gullah people were here in southern Georgia, but there's um, like a little beatbox thing with your body. Did you ever do body percussion and beatboxing stuff with your body? Yes. So, um, so, so it goes stomp, clap, stomp, clap. That's the first pe- measure. And the second one is snap, shoulder, shoulder, pat, pat, stomp, stomp. So let's do both measures. Ready, right. stomp, clap, and stomp, clap, stomp, sh- snap, shoulder, snap, shoulder, shoulder, pat, pat, stomp, stomp. Then this is on your leg and you go wiggle, wiggle, va, wiggle, get the va. And you make up whatever you need to remember. That's measure three. Let's do all three measures and stomp, clap, stomp, clap, snap, shoulder, shoulder, pat, pat, stomp, stomp, a da da dee da ba, ya dee da dee da deem. Then you skip your shoulders. So snap, pat, pat, stomp, stomp, sassafras. That's how I remember that because it's a little yes. sassy. So all four of those fit perfectly for yonder come day, day is a breaking. You have to kind of syncopate it a little bit. Yonder come day, oh my soul. Yonder come day, day is a breaking. Sun is a rising in my soul. So then they can do no singing, do those little gestures. It's perfect for getting them moving around the rooms into different groups. 
So you can do that as a round or you can do that as a partner song for building vocal independence. And let's say you have everyone assigned like who's going to be yonder or who's going to be yonder or whatever the other part is or the melody line. You can have them start in their groups and then use the little hand jive to walk around to a new group and mix with someone else. And they start to learn how to sing with other parts, but they also get to be around the room and it turns choir into like super movement and fun. I love that. If that makes any sense. Yeah, it totally makes sense. That song also works really fab with Twinkle Twinkle. Twinkle Twinkle Little Star. I also can't get credit for that. I learned it at the ACDA Children's Choirs Retreat in New Jersey back in 2016 maybe. There was a guy presenting and he started with that and it was so much fun. That Twinkle Twinkle song stuck. I love that. All I the love movement, it. all the fun. Yes. Movement games are always fun too. When you can get them singing and moving at the same time, it's it's always, always, always amazing. But to loop it back to what you were doing earlier with your bear hiding, it's about engagement, engaging the body for the right reason, engaging the ears, engaging the eyes, making it to where music is still fun because that's why music exists. It's fun. Absolutely. It's a great part of their life. Absolutely. 100%. And if you always have that joy and that fun that made you love music in the first place and you can carry that with you and you teach your students how to do that, they're always going to have that gift for life in, no, in whatever situation music looks like for them. And that's something so special. If we can always find that place of joy and fun, mm-hmm. going yeah. to make all of our musical experiences amazing. I think we have time for one more song. Do you have any more you want to do? I have some, like I have an echo song, but I'm also yes. willing to do another one of your songs. Everyone no, knows echo that song. I feel like, though. They might um, not. Okay. Let's do it. So it's an echo song. And so I would sing, down by the bay, down by the bay, where the watermelons grow, where the watermelons grow, back to my home, back to my home, I dare not go. I dare not go, or if I do, love it. And then they can either join me or I can sing it as a solo or a student can sing it solo. A student can sing it as a solo. Then we would do my mother would say as the last one. My mother would say. And then the student would sing, have you ever seen a ghost eating some toast down by the bay? Or they can make up their own. There's so many ones that exist too. Have you ever seen a frog sitting on a log? All sorts of fun ones. You can and they totally, love each other too. You could use the whiteboard on Zoom and have them draw out. So like you could do like a little bit of Pictionary and have them draw out their frogs sitting on a log. <laughs> have them ghost eating a piece of toast. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> oh, how much fun. This yeah. is super cool. Oh, the songs that go on forever. I had four white horses on here. Four white horses up the river. Hey. Hey, I love that one. There's so many songs we could do. But I hope I that this this gives the listeners something to energize them and get excited about restarting January and walking in energized. And it's hard sometimes to wake up and feel excited, especially if you're still virtual or if you're still hybrid or if you're still in the unknown place. But it'll be worth it. Absolutely. And it and- – it might be harder right now and that's okay and all those feelings are valid but holding on to those little moments that bring us joy and if we need to hold on to them a little bit more so right now that's what we got to do there's been so many moments of just pure epiphany via the zoom in the last like the last couple weeks of the fall and then the first like the first rehearsal coming back it's not the same type of epiphany that you see happening when they're in front of you because you see it in their body first this you have to wait until it gets to their face and sometimes an epiphany will happen in their hands Mm -hmm. or they'll acknowledge it someplace else that they've oh I've made it's not always their face that glows but when it yes. does glow, man, it's totally worth all the crazy energy we're having to bring to the table and all the time brainstorming the right songs and the right things to do. This has been so much fun. Before we go, what's one thing you really want the listener to walk away with? I So something that my mom has always like instilled in me ever since I was little, that 
whatever is done in love is well done. And so I try to bring that into all spaces, whether it's music or my personal life or things like that. And so that's something that I always love to share with other people is that if you are doing things in love, you're doing them well, and you can have confidence that you're doing the right thing. And whatever that looks like for you, like let that shine and share that with others because other people need your gift and you are sparking other gifts by being your authentic self and doing things in love. That's beautiful. Thank you so much for being here. This was so much fun. I feel so energized. Like I was kindergarten, first grade, second grade, fourth grade, fifth grade, sixth grade. I'm ready. The day is just getting started. It was so fun. And I always enjoy my time with you. So just thank you so much. And you energize me too. And I always have a blast with you. Always. We will do this again soon. Have a great one. Thank you. You too. Love wins. Do it through love. Find your energy, find your purpose, and just have fun. That's what really matters. Don't take anything too seriously. It should be part of who you are. It should be something that just pours into the souls of those making music with you. I hope that you've enjoyed today. It was so much fun recording it, obviously. If you're listening to this on the podcast, know that you can jump over to my YouTube channel, Dr. Emily Williams Birch, and you can find the video of this if you're looking for some of the movements we did. Um, But I am so thankful that you listened. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to reach out. Know that what you're doing matters. We all know that music matters. And I will see you next time as in the bonus episode coming in a couple days on the Music Ed Matters podcast. Mm -hmm.